Hello, travel partners. I can't believe that we're approaching the anniversary of our suspending all of our cruises. Ugh. It's been a year of frustration and of disappointment, a year of anger and uncertainty. But finally, finally, we are beginning to see the light of day. I wanted to make sure you're aware of all that we here at the Royal Caribbean Group are doing to prepare for our healthy return to service, working with you, our travel advisors, governments, medical experts, etc. Ironically, while we are now entering what should be the most positive phase of the process, it may also be one of the most frustrating phases. These are the most hopeful days we have had in a long time. But as we get closer to our goal, we inevitably also get more impatient to reach it. It's like eating dinner. I don't know about you, but I don't think about dessert before I go out to dinner. But once I've finished my entree, I can't wait for the dessert. I think we're entering that kind of a period now with respect to the virus as well. The really good news is that we are in the midst of a rapid and dramatic decline in cases and fatalities. This is the trend that I talked about last November, and it's happening just as we predicted. It's exactly what we need to reopen society. However, this is the current trend, and we need to be careful that we don't screw it up. As eager as I am to get to dessert, especially if it involves chocolate cake, I know I should eat my entree before I eat the cake. The determining factor to our ability to get society to reopen and to get cruising started again is getting this disease under control. We now have the ultimate weapon to do that, the vaccines. In fact, we have three vaccines which have all proven to be safe and effective in containing this virus. And they are being rapidly deployed. It does take a while for the machinery to really get into gear, but that machinery now seems to be in full swing and we're vaccinating almost two million people every day in the United States. The beautiful part of this is that we know the vaccines work. We're no longer talking about theory or expectations. For example, in Israel, where the level of vaccinations is one of the highest in the world, the drop in, clay in cases has been clear and beautiful to watch. The statistics are impressive. Now, in the test phase, the vaccines were 95% effective. But in the real world, they've done even better and have demonstrated a 99% efficacy against anyone getting seriously ill from the disease. Speaking of Israel, we announced today that Royal Caribbean International will soon be starting cruise operations from Israel, going to Greece and to Cyprus. And we will be doing this on our newest ship, Odyssey of the Seas, which delivers in about a month. All crew will be vaccinated, and all guests over 16 will be vaccinated. This is a big deal. It will give us a new opportunity to demonstrate in a tangible way how we can accomplish our goal of operating cruises in an appropriate and safe manner. The question is no longer when will cruising resume. It already has resumed. Odyssey of the Seas will be our fifth ship operating around the world and is very much a part of our ramp up. As you know, we've been operating in Singapore and the Canary Islands for some time. MSC is operating in Italy. And soon now we will be operating in Israel, Greece, and Cyprus. Cruising has restarted, and it will ramp up nicely. We're well aware that COVID-19 isn't going to be eradicated, and it will always be possible that there will be cases on ships, just as there will be cases on land. However, I believe it's also possible to establish strong protocols to deal with those cases when they arise. Our goal is to isolate individual cases so they don't become an outbreak which ruins the vacation of everyone else. Our isolation and contact tracing protocols will help isolate the few cases that do occur, and we believe that these protocols will be an important element in our ability to ramp up cruises in a reassuring manner. Clearly. The experiences in Singapore, in Germany, in Italy, and the Canary Islands are demonstrating that safe and healthy cruising is possible. They're also demonstrating every day that we sail just how much pent-up demand there is amongst our guests. In fact, demand in Singapore has been so high that we've extended the season there by three months. Governments around the world are beginning to recognize this growing demand for travel and to understand that their policies and regulations have to create a framework where safe travel, including on cruise ships, can resume. The public craves the opportunity to cruise, and the economy needs the employment 
that the cruise industry provides. But it's a slow process and we need to be patient. I am so eager to get back to normal business that I could scream, but we need to do this carefully and methodically. At the Royal Caribbean Group, we've taken steps to protect our financial strength, and we're trying to help our travel advisor friends get through these last few months with our RCL CARES program. So this raises the question of whether we will require vaccines on all of our sailings. The answer is, we don't know yet. Clearly, widespread vaccinations are the fastest and the best way to get this disease under control. We expect to vaccinate all our crew members against the disease, and they have indicated an overwhelming desire to be vaccinated. Whether we will require vaccines of all of our guests on all of our ships hasn't been decided yet, but we are prepared to go where the science leads us. There's no doubt that we are finally making progress against COVID, but this fight isn't yet over. And as the experts have warned us, the biggest threat now is complacency, that we will take these good numbers, prematurely decide that the pandemic is over and declare victory. That would be unfortunate because while one V, the vaccines, gives us great hope, the other V for variants could slow or even reverse the drop in new cases. Studies are being done on the several variants appearing around the world and here in the US. So far, it appears that the variants will slow our progress, but they won't stop it. The already proved, approved vaccines can still be effective against these variants. As I said early in this pandemic, there won't be one big day when somebody blows a trumpet and all of our ships embark simultaneously around the world. Instead, you will hear a growing cacophony of happy vacationers who can finally leave their homes as we gradually phase in more and more cruises, generating more and more new adventures and new memories. You are our partners in designing those memories and building those adventures. Now is the time to plan for how we will do that together. The public health environment is improving around the world. Countries are beginning to reopen their economies. We have to be ready with creative ideas for the public who just wants to get on a cruise, relax and have fun. For now, we do have to remain patient. We've not yet reached the end. We're getting closer and closer, but it's still a ways off. I know that we've thought we were closer to the end before, but the vaccines really have changed the game. And despite all the blows our industry has taken, it is clear that there will be a huge demand when we open our doors. Finally, it's time to start getting excited that the end is so close. It's time to make sure we have our financial house in order and to prepare for the onslaught of bookings ahead because it will be an onslaught of bookings as all that pent up demand comes our way. And while you're planning and preparing, don't forget to wash your hands and wear that mask. <laughs>